fucking franchises here, bud. What's up, gang? I just blazed one, so that should kick in in about 45 minutes. Um, we're uh, doing a stoner movie today. All right. So I thought I'd play the part. Uh, over here, you know, smoking that sweet cron. Over here is the D train, Daniel Ernberg, and uh, my sober pal. Looking great this morning. What's up, buddy? Logan, be a dare. Howdy. Does that B stand for like bud? Blazing one. Nice. Yeah. I already said that, so I thought maybe you'd mm -hmm. want to change it to something else. Um, now, Logan, this is a special episode of the franchise. Um, and it's it comes to us from our good friend David. Do we know his last name? Is it E A P? Is that I have no I believe idea that that was a that. typo and it's E S P. It used to be S P and then it switched to A P and I didn't know whether it was intentional or not. I want to say S P and maybe it's short for like Espinoza. <laughs> maybe maybe Espinson, like like Buffy Jane. writer Jane Espinson. That's possible. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to dox him or anything. Yeah, me neither. I guess you're right. But David, he's a good pal. He's been a listener a uh, long time, like close to the beginning, if not the beginning. Nobody's been a listener for a short time. Mm, that would imply we have like still... a new listeners. <laughs> no, we do. <laughs> people discover the show. Oh, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, David. Uh, they don't leave is... iTunes reviews. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I know. But David is from the, uh, the Henry era. He came to us pre-Logan. And he stuck with us. So you should thank Thank you, David. Yeah. Um, David uh, entered into our fantasy football league this year. Okay. And I was very dominant the whole year. Okay. I don't even want to present it that way. David had a better record than maybe the entire year. Yeah. I was the underdog going into the finals. But I was really certain I was going to win. I felt really good about my team. They kind of came on stronger in the second half of the season. And so I was like, this is perfect. I've got momentum on my side, baby. As long as the Dolphins don't magically start sucking in the last two weeks and Travis Kelsey actually plays, then I'm in business. Little did you know. Um, Little did I know the Dolphins magically started sucking in the last two weeks and Travis Kelsey like couldn't get his boner out of his hand. So uh, <laughs> fucking I lost. David beat me fair and square by like a lot. It wasn't a close contest. Like 80 points, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. He destroyed me. Uh, like I went into the second week of the finals. Just I was already like, I'm going to lose. I congratulated him after the first week. I am i don't blame you. It was an accident. But I was yeah. like, hey, great win. He was like, bro, it's two weeks long. I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, he knew you were right. He was being polite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I got my ass kicked, and we let David pick the next franchise. So he chose Harold and Kumar. Well, actually, he first said he was going to choose, what was it, Yu-Gi-Oh? No, Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. Okay. And... We got all nervous about that. But then in the second paragraph of his email, he said, I'm not going to be I'm not going to make you watch something that you are going to be miserable about. And I'm like, there are so few listeners, like literally under five <laughs> that would that would think to do that. So thank God he won fantasy football. Imagine um, P-Dot if he won. We'd be oh covering. My, he Dragon would destroy Ball, us. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Although I got to say, P-Dot lately has had really good taste. I'm, I'm enjoying his letterbox. So and his, his recommends on hey i'm watching here he's had some yeah good ones. he's been on fire the last couple of months mm -hmm. um anyway but uh david thank god in his second paragraph he's like i'm gonna give you harold and kumar and i'm like well that's delightful who doesn't love harold and kumar and then i find out logan's never seen a harold and kumar but Who's i love him hey all right listen it, they're so likable you can't watch a harold and kumar movie and be like fuck these guys yeah, they're as likable as Bill and Ted almost. Absolutely. Ap absolutely. All right. Yeah, absolutely, as Mr. Popper might say. Um, I saw a review on Letterboxd. I don't know who it was, but somebody was like, the good thing about Harold and Kumar is that they're stoners, but they're the smart people in the movie. Like everybody else are the, like, are the dumb, crazy people. You're totally right. I thought that right. was a great point. Yeah, it is a great point. I never really thought about it before. Yeah, these are like the straight men. Ryan Reynolds and, and uh, Chris Maloney, those are all the weirdos. 
Yeah, and the extreme guys and shit. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, Kumar, I'd forgotten, performed successful surgery in this film. Just yeah. like casually. That was very funny. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's talk about the first one. So this is why we're doing a bonus episode this week, because it's like a three movie franchise. We figured, fuck it. We'll just do the, the two sequels on Tuesday. We'll bang out a shorter episode on just the first one here at the end of the week. Um, so may not be Harold, that short. Who knows? We'll find out. Gang. You guys know. We don't. That's true. You see the runtime right there. I could be speaking out of my ass right now, or Logan could be. We'll find out. Um, so Harold and Kumar go to White Castle was created by uh, the writing team of John Hurwitz and Hayden Schlossberg, two great Jews. And uh, they 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 they're kind of interesting. They went to high school together. There's like two bros that went to high school together. And then like one of them went to college in Chicago, one of them went to college in Pennsylvania at UPenn, I think. And uh, he was like, let's get just... Cal pin. <laughs> Good point, man. So they just like kept uh, writing together in college. In college, they go ahead and sell a screenplay to Hollywood called Filthy. It was probably a very dirty comedy because that's what Hollywood loved at the time. Um, and so they they both quit school. They move out to California together and Filthy doesn't get made. But they pretty quickly sell this script. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Um, Harold and Kumar were like based on their friends. And I know White Castle was like in the original script, but they had Krispy Kreme as a backup. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah you ever yeah. been to White Castle? I have. Yeah. There was a White Castle right next to uh, the, the Long Island Railroad Station that I used to have to go to a lot and like college and stuff or anytime i like went home to my parents and so uh you know if i was drunk enough sometimes i'd eat there you like it no i really don't you know there's one part in the movie where like anthony anderson is describing a white castle burger really like magically to like make you sound make it sound like it's this beautiful thing and when he got to the little onions that explode in your mouth like flavor crystals, he says that in the movie. Mm. I was like, that is disgusting. I and don't like onions. So. I don't like onions either. So I've never even had a White Castle burger with onions. And I feel like people who like White Castle really value the onions. So like, I feel like I'm just eating like a shitty patty and a shitty bun. And so I could be a bird right now. Your girlfriend, yeah. I saw her review. She seemed to be a fan. Seemed to work on her, the marketing. Oh, we were watching it stoned, and afterwards she suggested we maybe go to White Castle. It, 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 was, <laughs> it was in the moment. I, I, I did see that, though. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Harold and Kumar. Fucking July 30th, 2004 was the release date. Um. That was the day, day before, before birthday. my birthday. Yeah, right after I graduated from high school. I turned 18 the day after this movie came out. Wow, that's huge. Street legal, baby. Um, oh. And, uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't even mention our director, right? So the director is this fella, Danny Liner. And he's a guy that really knew this, like, stoner comedy world. Because you know what his most recent movie was right before this? No clue. A little classic by the name of Dude, Where's My Car? Oh, wow. That's actually crazy. I thought about that watching this a little bit. Well, because at one point their car is missing and one of them says, Dude, Where's My Car? Did they really? Yes. I didn't catch that, but that's yeah, Absolutely. Funny. Uh, the great Danny Liner. He was mostly a TV director. He went all over TV directing shit from like Gilmore Girls to Arrested Development to The Sopranos. Movie-wise, he's probably best known for these two stoner comedies, and he unfortunately passed away in his 50s uh, from lung cancer. Damn. Yeah. Very sad. I know. I know. He was cool. I used to, you know, if I saw a Danny Liner movie was on the docket, I'd check it out. Now we got uh, 
David Gordon Green, he's the best stoner comedy maker since then, right? I don't I don't know how that happened because back when I was a fan of Danny Liner, he was like the next Terrence Malick, and then he became the next Danny Liner. This uh had a nine million dollar budget and it made twenty three point nine million at the box office. I'll tell you what, I'm looking up this thing at the, the box office rankings. It came in at number one hundred and ten for the year. Not very good. And and I was like, it, you know, you. It's funny, like when a movie has sequels, it gives it some kind of legacy. Like it makes it seem like it was a bigger movie than it maybe was at the time. You know, mm-hmm. so I, I'm like looking. Here's a list of movies that made more money than Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. A random Yu-Gi-Oh movie. Uh torque like these are movies that were con- I- i'm going to name a few movies that were considered massive failures at the time but they made more money than this movie that is remembered as a hit uh jersey kevin smith's jersey girl made more money than this uh with benifer uh team america by trey parker and matt stone oliver stone's alexander which was a disaster at the time and Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, which was considered a huge disaster at the time. And how about this? Halle Berry's Catwoman. That made more money than this. Wow. And they're clearly setting this up for a sequel. So it seems like they're expecting success. I know. And I waited for, for years, Logan, for Harold and Kumar go to Amsterdam. I wanted that movie. And then when they announced Harold and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay, I was like, that's bullshit. Is it like, are they on they, their way and then they end up there? I think it is something like that. Like it does follow it, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's just goofier. Um, anyway, uh, it was nominated for a couple of MTV awards. You want to know about that? I want my MTV. Best musical performance for when the boys sing uh, Hold On by Wilson Phillips in the car there, but they lost to Napoleon Dynamite when he dances on stage. Oh, and this then, is better. <laughs> and then uh, they were nominated for best on-screen team, but they lost to the Mean Girls. Mm, all right, fair I, enough. I wonder if the Mean Girls will win again this year. The MTV yeah, Movie I hope so. Awards. Renee right. Rapp accepting the award. Okay, so I love the way this movie begins. I think it's kind of really smart, even if it's a little bit ripping off something that I love. Um, Have you, Logan, ever seen the pilot episode of Freaks and Geeks? Yes, I watched all of Freaks and Geeks. Oh, good for you. Um, So do you recall that the pilot opens with this like very handsome boy who looks vaguely like James Vanderbeek and like a very pretty cheerleader having a melodramatic argument on the rafters, like the bleachers of the high school until the camera suddenly pans underneath the bleachers to where our good friends, the freaks are smoking weed and having yep. a great conversation about Led Zeppelin. I do. It, it's, it's sort of what it's doing is it's showing us what television is today usually like what a teen show looks like and then panning underneath to what our fucking show is going to be i always thought that was brilliant and Mm -hmm. harold and kumar does a similar thing here where it starts on the two white characters that uh Mm -hmm. harold works with um including ethan embry from can hardly wait and they i know him from sweet home alabama which we just Fair. talked about because of Reese and uh, the other guy, Josh Lucas. Oh, right. Josh Lucas? Jo- yeah, our good friend, Josh Lucas. Um, so he, uh, so they're having like a, like a jokey conversation. Like they're a couple of bros planning a party for the weekend and shit. And then it's like, oh, but we got to like pawn our work off on somebody else. And they walk out to Harold and it's like passing the buck to him. It's like, that's what most mo- movies are today. Like, that's what you expect from a stoner comedy. The director of this very movie two years ago made one of those starring Ashton Kutcher and Sean William Scott. That's what movies look like. And then it's like they walk through the hall and we start our movie with our guy, Harold. I love that. 
I think yeah. that's great. I always thought that was kind of great. Um, so that's our introduction to Harold, played by the great John Cho. Still, I mean, John Cho, he's been through a lot. Ups and downs, career ups and downs. Now we're back to the ups. I, You know, no one benefited more from Hollywood finally s- deciding to start giving a shit about Asian people than John Cho. Really? Yeah, because I feel like we all just agreed, like, well, he should have been what a about star Aquafina? Fuck- she was in everything for a second. I, I know, but I mean, like, she was coming up around that time. But I mean, like, an existing actor. Like, John I Cho had been we like... I were having to put little stipulations on. I, I know, I understand. But, like, he'd been floating around for years. And I feel like the second Asians started getting lead roles, like, everyone was Randall just like, Park. well, what about him? He should have got, got a million roles. roles for a second. <laughs> all right, yeah. Well... You right, got though, fr- not, fresh like off the boat. I know who you mean. Constance Wu. She got a nice bump. Mm-hmm. But uh, Michelle yeah. won an Oscar recently. Who? Michelle, Michelle Yeo. Yeo. Right. Yeah. She's on a new show, isn't she? On like AMC or something. I don't, I don't know. I saw an ad for it. It's called like The Brother's Son. Hmm. Yeah. Where's it sounded... The bro- Oh, that's so funny. But mm-hmm. no, it's like two brothers that have the last name Son. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah, With if you're not looking at the title and you can't see the punctuation and stuff, you can really mess that up. I had no idea, so. Yeah. They fooled me. Wow. Okay. Um, did you know that this film is only called Harold and Kumar go to White Castle in America because we are the only country that has White Castle. No. I mean, but that makes sense. Do so you know what it's called in other countries? Tell that, me. Like our, our good UK listeners like James Davis and Jack Bulberry. Tell me. Tell me what they're watching. They know this movie is Harold and Kumar get the munchies. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I love that. I thought it was going to yeah. be like a, a, loca- like a restaurant uh, that's central oh to... no it's still white castle in the movie but since that do- that's like not a marketing hook there they just call it like get the munchies so that they know it's a stoner comedy right it's very funny yeah all right so that's how we meet john show and we meet cal penn over uh he's at an interview right and he's saying some yeah fred willard oh yeah fred willard and he gets to say some fun racial humor. And I will say, this movie is so 2004. Like, the, the style of humor. Every, there, there's got to be a huge scene about farts. There's got to be... Uh, Lots of gay so, stuff. So much gay stuff. The, the F slur is thrown around very willy-nilly in this mm-hmm. film. Yeah, by characters both good and bad. Like the, I think the first I time you're we gonna hear say, it, you know, man, go ahead. No, I think the first time we hear it, it's like one of those extreme guys. So you can like justify it in your mind, like what? Is, like, he's a douchebag. But then like five minutes later, Kumar says it, and you're like, oh, I guess that's just the thing we say. But Kumar is the edgier one of the two. Makes sense for him. If Harold said it, it would break the movie. That's Harold true. Would that. Harold would have to say it in a fit of fury or something, and nobody wants or to making hear fun that. Of somebody. Or like, 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 uh, like he's a, ab- like he knows what he's talking about. Like he's above what he's saying a little bit. I guess so. Yeah, he is a little like that. Um. All right. So that sets up the movie, which is that Harold has to get some work done. Kumar has his final job interview in the morning, and his dad's going to be super mad if he doesn't get it. And instead of preparing for those two things, they're going to try and get some white castle that's right they get stoned and they see a commercial and that's literally what they just see a commercial and they're like oh that's gonna be the rest of the movie we're gonna go find that restaurant yeah um i like that they leave their phones behind and the excuse is that they forgot them and they made it halfway down the hall <laughs> don't want to go back yeah that is hilarious <laughs> that's so many really little device. moments like that um, yeah they're just so funny but we'll get into it i guess right we will uh, the first little side characters we meet are the two Jewish fellas. They're play. What are their names? Because Goldenstein names- and something like that. 
it's like Rosenberg and Goldstein, and I think it's supposed to be a play on Ro- Rosenkrantz and Guildenstern. What is yeah. it? <laughs> Gil- yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's Goldstein and Rosenberg. Okay, yeah. So it's Rosenkrantz and Guildenstern, like the side characters in Hamlet. And uh, apparently the original plan was to do a little spinoff movie with these characters. That's fine. That would have been fun. Yeah. I would have maybe even preferred that as a sequel. But I mean, I, I would have wanted Harold and Kumar. Yeah. They should have done both of them. But I guess this movie wasn't as big a hit as I thought. So they went with the one that made sense. I get yeah. it. Yeah, of okay. course. Yeah. Plus, he wants to see a movie about two Jews. Um, <laughs> so it's um, David Crumholtz and Eddie K. Thomas. We got a little American Pie reunion going here. Milf that- guy. John Cho played Milf guy. Of oh, course. wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And Eddie K. Thomas was. Um, he fucked Stifler's mom. Yeah, but what's his character? I forget name? his character's name. God damn it. He doesn't know his character's that name. That sucks. I should know that. He, he's also in Freddy Got Fingered. He's the brother just, of Freddy Got I'll call him Shipbreak. Okay. So he's Freddy? Yeah, he's Freddy. He's the titular Freddy. Yeah, he's the titular Freddy in Freddy Got Fingered. That's what a career that right. guy had. Yeah. Um, his name's anyway. Paul Finch in the American Paul Pie Finch, movies. Right, but we'll call him Shipbreak. Yeah, that was his great nickname by Stifler, <laughs> whose mom he later fucked. Multiple um, times, I believe. I, I, I think by the end of it, they were, had like a legitimate relationship. Really? Well. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so I like those characters, and I love that their goal for the film, Logan, is to watch the movie The Gift by Sam Raimi at, in order to see Katie Holmes's breasts. That's right. Yeah. And I believe they do it. They they nail They're it. They're successful. And we get to see them and some of the greatest they have some of the greatest line readings in motion picture history, genuinely. It, it uh he goes when he first sees her boobs, he goes They're fake. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you can see his brain working. It's great. And then later on, when they run into Harold and Kumar and describe the experience as, you know, the Holocaust, it was the exact opposite. That of was that. so funny. That was that was one of the best lines. I thought that was one of the best lines in the movie. That always made me laugh really mm-hmm. hard. Um, okay, so they're delightful, and now Harold and Kumar venture forth into the world, and the movie gets a little less perfect for me. It gets a little spotty. Uh, I love the first twenty minutes of this movie. I wouldn't change a frame. I think it's pretty funny throughout. I don't it know. is funny. It is funny throughout, but it gets a lot more hit and miss. I think Unders- it's more hit than Dude, Where's My Car? Interesting. Uh, yeah. There's an argument to be made. I, I think, think so. I think most people would agree with you on that. Um, well, sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> Although Dude, Where's My Car might have the funniest moment of all with the emus. Which are the emus? I really love that. Part. Ostrich. Ostriches. Ostriches. That's so funny to me. That is very funny. Great stuff. But this film has a cheetah. That's funny the ostriches. The cheetah, yeah. the cheetah was fine until he started smoking weed with the cheetah. And then I, thought I really liked it. Yeah. The, it's really sort of in, in a very episodic movie. And so inevitably some stuff is going to be funnier than other stuff. Of course. It's yeah. fine. You know, it's funny. Like we were talking about the whole diversity thing. It's like great that this is a film with an Asian and an Indian lead uh, at a time when everything was so fucking white. Um, But arguably, I think the stoner friend that like the stoner genre is the genre that least needed that because think of the most famous stoner movies ever. It stars like a Mex like two Mexican dudes, That's one of true. which is half Asian. Yeah, good point. Yeah. They I thought about that while I was watching movie. this. It was the one genre that didn't need this. Why not? Yeah, they should have done a rom com. That would have really put us put them forward. I think they probably just couldn't have gotten it made at this time. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, which is a bummer, but whatever. Like I, I read even like 
Hurwitz and Schlossberg said that in the script they made really specific references to like Harold's Asianness and Kumar's Indianness, so like studios wouldn't fuck with that. And still, they said almost every interview they got into with the studio, um, the studio asked if they could change it to a black guy and a white guy. Yeah. That's yeah. So sad. I know. It's crazy. What a crazy <laughs> world. Yeah, really. Um, I mean, you got actors right there. Like John Cho and Cal Penn at this age were so primed for a movie like this. Like when I I remember when this movie came out, I didn't think about the diversity at all. I mean, part of that is just because in 2004 I was so fucking unaware of my whiteness. But like uh also, just John Cho and Cal Penn were comedy actors who'd been around for a couple of years at that point, and it just made a lot of sense that they'd be starring in a stoner comedy like that. Like, that right. didn't seem weird to me. Like, in hindsight, I guess, or I get that this was oddly important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it, it felt that way. Yeah. And, I, but I just... That missed me at the time completely. Yeah. Great input. I don't know what to say. You, you <laughs> do your job. Thanks, Logan. He also likes his neighbor, Maria. Oh, yeah, yeah. Harold I guess we does. should. I mean, she's really the only female character in the entire movie. Uh, Malin Ackerman. Oh, yeah. And I guess those, um, those two babes who shit. <laughs> oh my god yep you're right Malin Ackerman this was the first thing I ever saw her let's in. not get to her yet we still have some people to meet okay fine fine you, you want to go in order yeah the first person we meet is Anthony Anderson he works at like the new location they got rid of the old White, White Castle right Bur it's like Burger World or something like that Um, yeah this one I like until he starts like running around like throwing shit and saying there's semen and the burgers. I, I possible LVP. It is a possible LVP. Yeah, don't start I mean, strong. Plus, he like might have raped a woman. I, th I do think that's yeah, the case. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're not sure, but maybe. And yeah, even yeah. a maybe on that is pretty rough. Mm -hmm. So right. that so what ha what happened at one point was Harold th he throws weed out the window because they like they break the law so then they stop at Princeton for more weed and we meet Bobby Lee you seem to like Bobby Lee that's what your whole review was about I'm a big fan of Bobby Lee and it's just that the Bobby Lee that I know is a crazy stoner like he's a nut job and he laughs like a hyena and he talks too much and. He has a lot of facial hair, and that's the Bobby Lee I know. So, I mean, I've seen this movie like probably 10 times or something before this time, and I never made the connection that this person was Bobby Lee. Oh, it's, wow. it's just such a different character. He's playing a nerd uh, who like really looks up to Harold's job, like he wants yeah. one of those jobs. And I read that the role of Harold came down to John Cho and Bobby Lee. Oh. And that makes sense to me. Like Bobby Lee probably would have been a good Harold, but it's so odd to see him play like this nerd type. I've just never seen it before. Has he ever, I mean, he's, that would have really helped his career. He's never had anything yeah. like that ever. No, I feel like John, like Bobby Lee is always like fifth or sixth build and whatever he's in. Yeah. Um, most recently, like what he was on that show, the unicorn, which was really a Walton Goggins vehicle. Right. And then he's, oh, he plays, uh, Carrie's podcast producer on, and just like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. She still does that <laughs> podcast. You better believe it. That's crazy. She still has the same co-host. You mean Che? I think yeah. Che's gone on to bigger and better things. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we meet this hippie guy <laughs> who gives him weed. He was kind of a fun character. Yeah, I rec you know I recognize this guy as the kid with the purple socks from Harriet the Spy. Wow. Um, have you ever seen Harriet the Spy? Never saw that. Well, there's a little kid in that movie who's like an actual character, but you never learn his name. But he wears purple socks, so everyone refers to him as the kid with the purple socks, and it's this guy. 
Can't wait to find out one day <laughs> what, what you're talking about. Uh, and then those two ladies, they play battleships, and that's a great part of the movie. Is that a great part of the movie? You sunk my battleship. <laughs> I don't uh, know. I was, no, it's I not. was genuinely trying to figure out how the game worked. Yeah, yeah. Is it every time a hit, or you just decide what's well, what's a hit and what's it, like if it's a good sounding fart, that's a good hit. <laughs> I don't really get it. Logan, someday I hope we get to play battle shits together. <laughs> I hope that never happens. <laughs> oh my god. Um, then um, we go... You, wait, we, can I just say something about those two girls? My whole mm-hmm. life, watching this movie, I thought that those two girls were like British twins. Like, t- like they must have found two British twins. And then, in doing research for this podcast, Logan, I learned that those two women are not related and are not British. Wow, I didn't think they were related, but you could have fooled me they were British. Amazing stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we stop to go to pee by the side of the road. I like that part where, where uh, Kumar pees in a bush, and there's a guy who pees right beside him in the same bush. You know, <laughs> right did you there. recognize that, man? No, who's that? I can't believe you didn't recognize that. That person who peed next to him is... The franchise all star, Jamie Kennedy. That's Jamie the, Kennedy. That's right from the Scream and the Mask franchises. That's crazy. I had no idea. That was flat out Jamie Kennedy peeing right next to old Kumar. What they do to him to make him not look like Jamie Kennedy? Nothing really. He just, he was wearing a suit. They made him sort of balding. That might have thrown you off. And he had a mustache. And mm. he just sort of a far away look in his eye. But I, I feel that if you looked up that character in like Google Images, you'd be able to see it's Jamie Kennedy with the knowledge that it's Jamie Kennedy. What about the guy who pees in the bush next to Kumar? I guess so. All right. Uh, but <laughs> wait, there's a raccoon attack. A raccoon bites him. I hate that part. I hate that part. It's kind of funny, the raccoon. It looks so bad. I never like fake animal humor. It's why I don't like the film without a paddle. But but I don't like I don't like like Grown Ups two fake animal humor where it's like a CGI deer. This but that's was what like this a, looked like to me. No no no. I th- I thought the raccoon was like a little like a little puppet that they made that they were kind of using. <laughs> Maybe. But the cheetah was fake, like the cheetah and like the, the hang glide. Was terrible. Later. That's I all hate terrible. All that looking. shit. But this I thought was pretty real and funny. But so like, we go to the hospital. We meet Ryan Reynolds. He's a gay doctor. I don't like him, but I like the stuff with um, Kumar talking to his dad. Your mm-hmm. review was a quote from that, which is one of my favorite lines of the movie. Yeah, that was probably my favorite one. Kumar says, yeah. "Dad, come on," and then Dad <laughs> says. Daddy is not coming on anything. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you did the accent. Oh, you got to. <laughs> uh, that was so funny. That was hilarious. Yeah, shout, that shout was out, very hilarious. Shout out to Dad. You know who we do surgery on? Who? We just talked about him. American Psycho 2. He played a cop from the Of the Dead movies. Boyd Banks. He's that back. guy? I <laughs> did not recognize him. I don't know if you ever will. Well, you said you knew it. Well, it's hard to. He, I know like in American Psycho 2, I was like, I know that guy. From yeah, you, he has a very specific face. Yeah, but I didn't even I didn't notice that it was that face here. I guess I was distracted by the there's lots of blood. bullet wounds. Yeah, there's, there's lots of blood. He probably has like a weird like a mask or tube on his face. Maybe. Yeah. So maybe and, I was, and I was distracted by my good friend. Wade Wilson, the Merc with the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, very famous gif taken from this movie that I never knew where, what? He, where, where they're like we need marijuana and he's like marijuana but why that's like a famous gif where he says but why really yeah like a, like a top 50 gif of all time I would say <laughs> wow it's pretty big uh, so then we go we run into Christopher Maloney and he is fucking hilarious he plays he's freak a, show he's always so good man He's, he's like unreal. he's doing this straight out of like you know his like wet hot stuff. But I um thought, I thought he was like a more nuanced. Remember Chris Elliott from Scary Movie 2? Take my strong. You're totally hand. right. It's like it it's like a, a little like that. It's like a way better version of that. 
Yeah, I because he's like playing gross, but he's playing scary, but also like funny and sweet kind of at times. And, like, yeah, so he's stupid. playing a little bit real. Like, yeah, it, it's you, so funny. Like when, when like Malin Ackerman's coming on to them, you genuinely are worried about Freak Show, both on the level of is he going to beat them up if he finds and out? Will he be and sad? Will he be sad? Yeah, totally. yeah. It's really, really good. I don't. I mean, you can't go with him for MVP because it probably has to be Harold or Kumar. But of all the other people, I think he's the best. All right. So I shout like out to that. Chris Maloney. Yeah. Um. And yeah, his wife is Malin Ackerman, and he tell. I by the way, I love the part in the car where they're they're like, "Look at the boils on his neck," and they're like, "He can hear us. We're right beside him." And he's <laughs> yeah. like, "I heard everything you guys said." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Great. It's so good. But he says, he tells them, you guys can fuck my wife. And the wife is Malin Ackerman. Also amazing in this movie. Probably second best out of all the people. She's First so good. First time I ever saw her in anything. Very memorable for obvious reasons. <laughs> and um, and then I think like the next like five things I saw her in, she was topless too. Like I remember yeah. there was a period of time where like you could not find Malin Ackerman with a shirt on. She's got to be topless in couples retreat, right? I think she is, yeah. She's got to. Yeah. She, she reunites with Ryan in the proposal. And she that. is in the, the heartbreak kid as well. I remember that. Holy shit, with Shawn yeah. Michaels, right? <laughs> I wish. Didn't you guys cover that one, actually? We No, we did the original. Oh. oh. Yeah, the, the original heartbreak kid with Charles Grodin on the untitled Charles Grodin I didn't know there were two of them. But uh, yeah, she's great here. She uh, she's got a good outfit on and stuff. Um, th then we pick up Neil Patrick Harris, who I always heard he was in these movies. Didn't know he played Neil Patrick Harris. That was pretty fun. Yeah, what what you need to understand contextually, Logan, is that Neil Patrick Harris hadn't been seen in years at this point. Like huh. he was gone. He was a child actor. Like he was Doogie Hauser. And then Doogie Howser went off the air and Neil Patrick Harris tried to be in a few things and none of it panned out. And then we were just like, fuck that guy. All right. And then he shows up here in Harold and Kumar. And he is so funny in this that the very next year, How I Met Your Mother. Wow. Very next year. And yeah. then the Big Brother house. He goes into the Big Brother house. Then very next year. <laughs> Very good, yes. <laughs> it's on a streak. Three years in a row. Can't stop him. Um, yeah, he's very funny here. I like. I love the part where he starts humping the back seat. That's so funny. Yeah. He's or I great. Guess he humps the front seat from the back. And, um, you know, like, the character he's being asked to play in How I Met Your Mother is pitched pretty similarly to this. Yeah, he's just like a yeah, bachelor horny guy. Yeah, this is uh, this is the pilot performance it's a backdoor pilot barney stinson yeah it's pretty cool when you think about it that way you know what, what i thought about when he gets in the car with them it's neil patrick harris uh cal penn john cho and what i was thinking there's two closeted gay men in this scene and nobody even knows it that's such a great point it's cal penn right cal yeah cal penn came out i think like within the last year yeah chose so a straight that, that was crazy i probably believe so <laughs> I mean, he's not gay as as much as I know. I guess I don't want to yeah, say. Yeah, but true. you know, we would have said that about Cal Penn like three years ago. That's true. Very true. Yeah. Um. um but that was that was pretty cool. Uh. And then later he so like he fucks up their car, but then later he pays for their meal. Comes back. Comes back around. That's fun. Yeah, that's nice. Yes, yeah. and it's fun to see him again. It's a welcome addition. And then uh, yeah, he, I, I think a lot of people would say NPH is the um. And NPH wasn't a thing, by the way. No one said that until this. The movie. cop does. He goes, NPH would never do something like That's that. That's what I'm saying. That started that. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people would say he's number one of like. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, I actually. I, yeah, that's fair. I, but I don't know. I think I Chris Maloney. I so hey, funny. stand by Maloney. I appreciate that opinion. My my review was almost just holy Maloney. That was almost my review because that's wow. what I, that's what I left feeling. Holy what a Maloney. miss! You probably, I know you, you probably uh, missed out on threes of comments. I did see your girlfriend liked my review during the course of this uh, episode. So shout out to yeah. Dallas! Thanks for that. Yeah. Bloody Siskel, her give her a follow. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> 
Uh, so the cop shows up. I love the part where Harold just steps on the road slightly, and then the sirens come on immediately. But like, oh, you're jaywalking. They were they, but then I think he like he punches him for some reason. I don't know. Uh, so he goes to jail. Right. He meets a guy who, oh, right. who got arrested outside of Barnes and Noble. Shout out to Barnes and Noble. <laughs> yeah. That Boom. Was pretty, that might pop I've seen and dudes get arrested outside of Barnes and Noble before. <laughs> no, um, not this guy. Not this guy. But you know, this guy, we've covered him. Bro. You and me, Logan. You and me? Yeah. When he what? Play, he played Bebop in oh, wow. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles colon out of the shadows. So Rocksteady was Seamus? Yeah. See, we were so distracted by Seamus, we yeah, weren't even right. paying attention to this guy. Damn. But here he is. I thought he was good here. Yeah, I love this character. He's given like such a, a weird, funny, sympathetic performance, like out of <laughs> yeah. nowhere. Uh it really worked, I thought. Uh, so Kumar shows up. Another great part here. Kumar shows up uh to the police station to save them. Is this the fantasy with the big bag of weed? I thought that was so freaking hilarious. It's astonishing. The, when like when he grows tired of the marriage and he see he has this line, he says, Bitch, learn how to make coffee, you fucking <laughs> whore. <laughs> oh yeah, it becomes gosh. like a John Cassavetes movie that with a so big bag of weed. Hilarious. The, the, this is probably the height of the movie. Like at this point, like we're on a roll. Like four or five great scenes in a row. I thought from like the yeah. Maloney Neil Patrick Harris into this part, we're just rocking. Yeah, it's, I guess you're right. It's great. Uh, so then we leave and we end up in the woods and we find a cheetah. CGI All right. Yeah. Cheetah. Then we go downhill. We go downhill a little while, but then they smoke weed with the cheetah, and I really like that part. And then we go down again. We go to Cartoon Land. Got to do that in the Stoner. What movies. was that? John Cho ends up in like a cartoon world for a second. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was dumb. Yeah, I always hate that part in me. Even it like Knock Up I... has like a cartoon world element for a second. Does it? Hey, I think Paul Rudd and Seth Rogen go on like an adventure for like ten minutes of the movie. They go to like Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, that's a weird part. I don't like that. So much. <laughs> I like that part. Yeah, it feels out of place. That and the part where they have the... Is it a hurricane? Earthquake? It's like a, it's an earthquake. And they're all standing outside. Where Jason Segel's naked, remember? Oh, yeah. I like that, that part, too. Yeah, those two those two parts never worked for me, 100%. Um, you know, there's yeah. even a stoner cartoon part in that movie, Strays, with the dogs. Wow. Like, the dogs all get stoned at one point. And, like, That's pretty hilarious, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Yeah, you didn't like that. You gave it a two. Yeah, I th there was some really good jokes. Like I, I, it wasn't. I'm glad I watched it, but uh, mm, not so hot. <laughs> All right, we haven't talked really about the bad guys, like the crew. They're like extreme, but they're they're I actually pretty that. funny. I think. I think they're very funny. A anytime yeah. one of the background characters like adds, like that was so fucking extreme. They're always hyping <laughs> each other up. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, they're funny. All their lines are really funny. And the actors are good, too. Uh, but we steal their truck, and that's when we get, hold on for one more day. I like that part. That's, uh, I, that's, that was really funny. Um, so then we hang glide, another CGI bad part. But that's is that when they get to the White Castle? Yeah, basically, we end up at the White Well, we see their friends, remember? Eating at oh, at restaurant. Hot Dog Heaven. I like that scene. John Cho's like, I, I need that feeling. I was like, yeah, you tell him, John Cho. That was good. Hot uh, Dog Heaven's a good name, I think, for a hot dog place. Yeah, I agree with I you. sometimes order from a hot dog place here in Las Vegas, Logan, called Steamy Weenie. Oh, that's good, too. Yeah, I, I kind of like that more, actually. <laughs> they nailed it. Uh, but we go, we eat. Uh, well, well, first of all, Neil Patrick Harris pays for our meal. Then we eat. And Kumar decides he wants to be a doctor, right? I guess so, yeah. That's nice. Uh, and then Harold tells off uh, he Ethan Embry and that other guy show up, but th they weren't doing what they said. They oh were doing. right, yeah. So he's got him over a barrel. Yeah, he's like, "Fuck you guys! You say that I slack, you slack. I always just because I'm quiet doesn't mean that I'm not better than you, right? So you tell on it. me, I'll tell on you, <laughs> motherfucker." So they're like, All "I right, wish you, yeah. I wish that was this whole podcast was you just doing scenes." That's what the Buffy <laughs> podcast is. I yeah, guess you're right. Reenacting the scene. <laughs> uh, 
Um, then we go home, and Maria, his neighbor. He, there's a, by the way, there's a whole thing. Sixteen candles. Is that? A good oh yeah. I should watch. Absolutely. You've never seen Sixteen Candles. I haven't seen like that. I haven't seen any of them besides Breakfast, Breakfast Club. Club. It's Ferris Bueller count. Um, Ferris Bueller but counts. I, I never yeah. saw Pretty in Pink. Yeah, I never saw a lot of some of those movies. Yeah, Pretty in Pink is good, but Sixteen Candles would be the next after those two. Okay, I'll check it out. Then. Yeah, uh, but that's a big thing where John Cho likes that movie. So does the neighbor Maria. But they kiss in the elevator. But she is she's going to be leaving for ten days. And I thought this was kind of crazy from Kumar, like saying follow her, like she's leaving for 10 days that, that, like if you had a chance with her she's like finally giving you an opportunity for the first time ever don't scare her off what are you doing all right yeah i'm sort of with you on but this. it seemed more like he wanted to go get high kind of he's like we can go do drugs in amsterdam yeah you know what's legal in amsterdam bruh. weed so that seemed <laughs> to be more his motivation but... yeah yeah i guess so um all Forced right ending but aside from that i thought like 70% funny. Yeah, it's a good movie. I I was at a pretty and solid... And it had some heart. Yeah, definitely. No, I, and, and unique characters that you want to see further adventures of, I think. Great uh, racial commentary and stuff like that. Yeah, self-aware. Yeah. Except I'm the go four. homophobia shit. Um, a four. Yeah, you know, I came in at a pretty solid three. But talking about it was real fun. Yeah. The only people I didn't like was like Anthony Anderson, Ryan Reynolds. That's basically it. I'm going to stick with three. Okay. All right. But I like this movie a lot. So like, you like Dude, Where's My Car more? Yeah. It's just weirder. The white one. The white version you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, guys. <laughs> All right, so I go four, you go three. My MVP, I'm going to go with Kumar, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I think that they are equally as good as each other, but I think that they think Harold is the lead. And I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think they're... Because, I mean, Harold's first in the title, Harold and Kumar, first of all. But also, at the end, Kumar is like having a realization, like, I want to be a doctor. But it's really just about what Harold's journey is, kind of. Harold, like, doesn't care, and then he goes in, over to Embry and tells him off. So I feel like they kind of push Kumar aside, but I think he's... Uh, I was really charmed by Kumar. So I'm going to go Kumar. I like it. I'll go Harold. All right. I love it. Uh, uh, who's your LVP? Anthony Anderson. I was, I'm going to do it, too. I, I don't like that part. I think... <sighs> Ryan Reynolds may be second place for this, but like, yeah. I, I think he just chopped that shit right out of the movie, and you, you're losing nothing. And but the Reynolds scene is comedy. actually funny. They do the surgery and like, yeah, it's no, like dramatic I, I, you, music. You and need stuff. that scene because it helps get Kumar like realize he wants to be a doctor. Um, Absolutely. But, uh, but you chopped that Anthony Anderson shit right out. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. Should we read from the Patreon? Can we do that? Yeah. Oh, we had one one thing from Michael Babcock. He says, "I'm so high, nothing can hurt me." Is that from the movie, or is he just saying be. that? Oh, maybe he's just saying that. <laughs> I assume that was from the movie. They keep saying a thing where they're like, "I'm high, I'm not low," something like that. Oh yeah, I like that little bit. Really? I'm worthless. I'm not worthwhile. Oh yeah, that's sad. Yeah, well, that was kind of good. Yeah. Um. Uh, but should we rank? Should we rank 2004? We didn't do that. Oh, you want to do that? Sure. I, I like 2004. 2004 is a great year for movies. Have we done that year? Yeah, probably. But let's do it again <laughs> for all the <laughs> listeners who stayed late for this episode. <laughs> My number ten. I'll go. I'll go first. Mysterious Skin, Gregoraki. Number nine. Yeah. Sleepover. Covered on. We love kids' movies. Number eight, <laughs> one of the better, best Harry Potters, Prisoner of Azkaban. Seven, <laughs> Kill Bill, Volume. This is, two. you know, you were like a six-year-old the in the year of two thousand four, and your list plays like the the work of a uh, of someone remembering what it was like to be six. So you'd have sideways ahead of Prisoner <laughs> of Azkaban, probably. <laughs> Six-year-olds love Greg Araki. <laughs> What? Come on. <laughs> I just Sorry. watched that this year. Go ahead. Uh, number six, Shaun of the Dead. Number five, mm. Collateral. 
Four, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. <laughs> number three, how's this for a uh, little kid? The Incredibles, number three. <laughs> number two, Before Sunset. And number one, the greatest superhero film of all time, Spider-Man 2. Wow, okay. Um. All right, my list is as follows. Number 10, Sideways. Number nine, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Number eight, the Born Supremacy. Number seven, Metallica, Some Kind of Monster. Number six, Dig. Number five, Team America, World Police. Number four, Friday Night Lights. Yeah, Number I was expecting that. There you go. Number three, Shaun of the Dead. Number two, Before Sunset. And number one, Kill Bill, Volume 2. Shout out The Village, not on either of our list. Yeah, I'll shout out a couple. How about fucking Hotel Rwanda? How about Closer? How about Maria Full of Grace? How about Anchorman? Collateral. Was Collateral on your list? That was on my list. The Notebook. I like that one. The Notebook. Saw Van Helsing. A few of my faves. Million Dollar Baby. (laughs) (laughs) We're just naming every movie. (laughs) The Day After Tomorrow. (laughs) <laughs> Scooby Doo Two <laughs> Monsters Unleashed. Very right. good. Um, uh, what's what's coming up? Oh, we're about to record. Hey, I'm watching here. We should probably end this and then start recording that. Yeah, we should. Uh, so we'll be back on Tuesday for the sequel to this episode, where wherein we cover Harold and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay and Harold, a very Harold and Kumar Christmas in 3D.